Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. Welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to show you how you can actually create mock-ups inside of Photoshop. This is a really basic way of doing so, but really effective. So the first thing you want to do is in Photoshop, we're going to bring in an image. I'm just going to bring in this one. This is a coffee mug. It's the easiest way to show you. Now, when presenting to a client, what I like to do and many other designers, they love to put their work onto products that mean something to the company. So for instance, a coffee shop would have a coffee logo on their coffee cup if it's a takeaway cup. But what if we have a image like this where it's just a static image and we need to make it look real with the logo on it. So bring your image in make sure it's high quality so you can tell by the way it zooms in if it zooms in and it's nice and crisp that's good first thing i'm going to do is hold alt or option and just double click on the background layer and i'm going to call this cup there's a lot of things i could do better however i'm going to show you how to get the work onto the cup face itself so we're going to use a shape so the first thing we need to do is press u or go to the shape down here and just approximately over the top of this create a rectangle make sure it's overlapping we're going to change the color of the rectangle to any color and then right here i'm going to right click on this shape and this is really important right click and go to convert to smart object what this does is it allows us to click into that shape layer or the smart object and edit it in here and when we save that it will apply it to anything in here this also means we can warp this rectangle into the shape of the coffee cup and it would apply the effects so on the smart object we're going to call this the edit i'm going to change the opacity to around 30 because i want to see the mug behind it press command t or control t for free transform and then go up here you'll see this warp option click on warp you'll automatically see this mesh pop up here now this mesh is really cool because what you can do is warp it around things it's like a 3d mesh and what we're going to do is warp it around the mug here there's plenty of ways to do this in fact you can actually go up to the warp function up here and change the warp function here it's got loads of presets even a cylinder one but we're not going to use that because it warps it a bit too much we're just going to go to the default the custom warp one up here the first thing we want to do is just approximately bring the warp in in the corners like so kind of matching the corners not perfectly because we want to have some overlap that we can edit later then we can just click on the warp itself and just very carefully drag them in it's going to look a bit strange at first but we can always edit this and then we can zoom in and start messing around with these handles it's kind of like the pen tool like the direct selection tool but we're trying to get the warping to look nice all the way through you can see why we changed the opacity here as well now if we zoom in we can get as fine as we want to and i'm just going to kind of eyeball this to make sure it works perfectly all the way through and boom photoshop is a really powerful tool so don't worry if you make any mistakes or if it doesn't look perfect just yet that's just the way it is okay so now we have our warp function it kind of looks good so far so press this button up here to apply it we intentionally had some overlap here because we're going to mask that out later it's going to be a lot easier for us to use the next thing i'm going to do is go and change my fill my opacity to 100 then we're going to change the blend mode this is the huge part because if we just have this shape on top it kind of looks weird it just looks flat so the blend mode option is really important on the smart object go to blend mode and linear burn it might not look it right now but it'll actually help with creating the shadows and the highlights it allows the highlights and the shadows to appear through so we don't have to do any dodging or burning it uses the shadows and the highlights from the image now the problem we have is obviously the colors a bit strange there's no work on it but we have these sharp corners down here now what i'm going to do is hide this shape and we're going to select the coffee cup and only the coffee cup now because we have a white background on this what i need to do is go to this object selection tool up here and we're going to drag all the way around it like so and it will create a really nice quick selection it's amazing then i'm going to press command c and command v which will paste only the object that i've asked for it to paste which is pretty neat if you want to and you want to get really precise or the object tool doesn't work for you go ahead and use the pen tool i'm going to call this selection and i'm going to mark it as red because whenever i mark something as red it means don't touch it don't use it it's just for some nefarious purpose such as selecting it the next thing we're going to do is select the coffee cup the reason why i've got it like this is because i can just click like so with command onto the shape and it will select the coffee cup automatically what we want to do 
is get rid of all these lines here. And the way we do that is just by pressing it and masking it. We've applied a mask on top of this now. There's a few more problems, but don't worry. You can see down here, we've got a bit missing. It kind of looks a bit strange here. And we've got this black stroke around it. This signifies to me it's not big enough. The shape that I've used, it needs to have a bit more of a bleed. So we need to warp it even more. But unfortunately, we can't warp it when there's a mask on it. So get rid of the mask again. We're going to warp it again. And it, you'll see that it kind of works pretty well. I want the warp to come slightly away from the actual shape here. It doesn't matter if it's like a line like this where it's quite a sharp line going up and it's quite straight but on these ones where it gets a bit weird we want to make sure that we have enough space for the bleed press ok select the copy cup again and we'll mask it again and you'll see that we get a lot nicer of a curve down here now we have another problem happening here too the mask didn't fully work and that's because we weren't precise enough so a way to mitigate this is go to your brush press b we're going to decrease the brush size and we're going to increase the hardness to around 80 i think and decrease the brush size even more and when we're on black and white we can actually change what comes through here i like to use the brush most of the time some people might want to use something different but Depending on what you're doing, the brush is normally fine. Decrease the hardness to around 60. And in any area where it looks slightly strange, just decrease the brush size and change it. Mask it. This is non-destructive, so we don't have to worry too much about it. And like so, we've got a nice shape here already. The next thing to do is we need to test whether our work is going to work with this or not. So what we do is we double click and this is what you normally do with all the mockups that you get from Invato. Double click and we're going to bring in some work. I'm going to just bring in all my work from this part here which is my logo with a cool background on it. Get my logo in the middle. Now when our work is in here and I press command S to save it, you'll see that it appears on our coffee mug and it looks pretty strange so far now the reason for this is the warping isn't correct now the way that i deal with this and i find it the most simplistic way when we get these strange objects is to again go into another warp so i get rid of my mask again and you can always put the mask on and off i like to test it as i go throughout so get rid of the mask go ahead and warp it again now from the middle here we can actually play around with it and I like to have my logo appear in it because it's something that I've spent a lot of time viewing and I can see whether it's warping correctly or not. And what I'm trying to do is make it look like it's warping around but not too much. You can see here I'm changing the handles and I'm going to mask it again. Go down with my brush and do some further refinements. So right there, that's looking pretty good. But to go a step further, we want to blend in a few more of the highlights into this because right now it kind of looks still a bit flat. So what we do is on our edit page here, we're going to go into blending options. So right click blending options and we'll get this layer style panel pop up here. Now, the blend if function is super important and really powerful for any image editing, especially when we're doing mockups because we have this. This allows us to blend if the underlying gray is this, so it'll blend it through. But you see, this doesn't look very good. However, if we click but hold option at the same time, it will do it like this. You'll see that it will break apart, but it's a lot more of a softer effect. And what we want to do is just bring in a few more of those highlights. And you'll see, as I do it, those highlights just appear in. Now we can do the same with the blacks also, but we kind of like the blacks as well to be in there. Press OK and boom. Before I go ahead and show you how to color the lid of the coffee cup, I just want to tell you about Envato because if you're watching this, you're wanting to make mockups. Well, if you don't want to make them and you're in a bit of a hurry or you want to get some really good mockups for your logo designs, for your portfolio, for showing your clients and presenting, which I would very much advice to do, then Envato Elements has got you covered. With over 50 million assets for you to use, which is insane, 50 million assets assets all the way from photography fonts images sound intro videos mock-ups but not only that they have these cool logo intros so if you need a logo reveal and you want a template to put your logo in they have those as well you can even get images where you can start making mock-ups with them as well Envato elements offers you a simple license you can read more about it on the website but honestly it's super simple and you don't have to worry about using the work even when your trial ends but as well as that you get seven days completely free of use that means you can download anything you want and use it for seven days and if you click the link down below you'll get 50% of Envato's 
annual subscription, which means that you're spending less than $20 per month to get access to 50 million assets. So go ahead, click the link. I use Invato Elements all the time. Me and the team all use it for presentations, fonts, you name it, they have it. Okay, let's try and color in this lid. We're gonna go to layer. We're gonna go to new fill layer, solid color, and we're gonna press okay. We're gonna change this to something crazy, like another pink. Bring this down for now. Okay, we have a solid color where we can just instantly change it if we need to by double clicking on it, which is always nice, but we need to mask everything out again, like so. We're gonna copy and paste it because it makes life easier for myself and get rid of it there. Select, change it to red, so I know not to mess around with it too much. Now, when it's selected, I'm going to press Command, Shift, and I to invert it. Now I'm going to bring the fill color to the top here. I'm going to change it to linear burn again so we can see what's underneath it. I'm going to select the top of the coffee cup again, so the lid. Then I'm going to press Command, Shift, and I. And that's going to invert the selection. So when we click on the actual mask for the color fill, we backspace, it will already be on top of our mug. And we can actually change this on the fly by going in, adding, or taking away with the brush tool. But I'm going to change the opacity of this so we just have a little bit of color there but now when we double click you can see that we can change the color of this lid and it has a metallic look to it as well so we can change the brightness to make it this sort of green autumnal color and there you have it there is the mock-up it's fully editable as well you can go even further than this actually you can create some shadows you can make it so you move you can duplicate it and change the perspective of everything else you can do a lot with this but this is the most simple way of creating a mock-up onto I don't know, a coffee cup or anything else that you can think of. Using these methods and principles, this is how you do it. If you enjoyed this video, then please press the red subscribe button and turn notifications on. I post every week, twice a week. And the whole goal of this channel is to teach you things, to inspire you and to make you become a better graphic designer or creative professional. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon. Goodbye.